Hi there, you little <coughs> elephant chicken nuggets. It's me, Coral. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Coral. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. Yo, you aren't gonna believe where I'm at right now. I'm at the elephant exhibit. And wow, these things are massive. Elephants are the largest land animal, and they spend 16 hours a day eating. No wonder they can't jump. Tell you what, I'm half tempted to jump over that fence and start riding one. But I think there may or may not be a rule against that. Either way, these creatures are just so fascinating. Want to learn some more? Mm, me too. <laughs> hey man, how you doing? Hi Andrew. I'm great. I just want to go over some cool elephant facts with the kids. Awesome. I'm always down to learn. Let's hear it. it says here that elephants can communicate with each other from up to five miles away. Holy moly. They can also live up to 70 years old. <laughs> Look at this. This, uh, this one's rubbing mud all over itself. Apparently they use mud as some type of sun screen, as sun, sunscreen. Who knew? All right, last fact. It says here that elephants have incredible memory. They can remember faces and other elephants that they haven't seen in over 20 years. That is amazing. I bet King Belshazzar wishes he was part elephant. What in the world are you talking about? It's because, you know, he, he forgot about the whole... You don't know who I'm talking about, do you? Uh, nope. Okay, well, King Belshazzar was the son of King Nebuchadnezzar. Like we learned last week, King Nebuchadnezzar learned that God is the one true God. And he learned that from Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Guys that were brought over from their hometown to live and work in the kingdom of Babylon. These four followed God no matter what. I mean, the king tried throwing three of them into the fiery furnace and nothing happened to them. So clearly the God they worshiped was real. Anyway, you'd think that when Nebuchadnezzar's son, Belshazzar, became king, he would have remembered all of that, but he didn't. Oh, well, that's a bummer. It really is. There was this one time when he was having a big dinner party and he asked his servants to go get all of the silver and gold cups. And the thing is, the cups, or goblets as they called them, were very special. Well, how special were they? Well, these cups were taken from the temple in Jerusalem back when Daniel was taken as a slave. They were used to worship and honor God. Not for silly parties and worship of idols, but that's what the king was doing. He was using the goblets to worship other gods, who aren't really gods anyway. Oh yeah, well that's like really disrespectful. Kind of sad too. Right? But the thing is, God had a plan. Because as soon as they started drinking out of those goblets, a hand from heaven appeared. A hand? A hand from heaven? Are you kidding me? And it wrote a message on the wall. But the thing is, no one could read it. No one? No one. The king was frightened. He offered a gold necklace and the opportunity to become the third highest ranking official in the land. Whoa, that's a big reward. It sure was, but still no one could read it until the queen walked out and she brought up the name of, can you guess? George Thorgood? What? No. Oh, I have no idea then. Daniel. She told the king about Daniel. Oh, of course, I should have known. So Daniel came out and he told the king that he wasn't interested in the rewards. He only wanted to read and share the message of what God had written. Daniel is the man. But before he read the writing on the wall, Daniel took that opportunity to share a message with the king. He told the king of his father's mistakes, reminding him of how he didn't listen to God. And then Daniel told the king about himself, about how he had turned against God and refused to listen and obey God. <laughs> wow, that's some heavy stuff. You ain't lying. And Daniel decided to tell the king about what the writing on the wall meant. He said this, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. You have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Holy moly. So basically the writing said, hey, Belshazzar, your kingdom's guilty of like a lot of things and you're in big trouble. Oh, and by the way, you're not going to be a king for that much longer. Did I get that right? Pretty much. It was a very revealing truth, but the king honored Daniel for telling him what it really meant. So what happened next? Well, everything that was written on the wall came true. That night, the king was killed and a man named Darius became king. Wow, so much happened so fast. I guess you're right about the whole elephant memory thing. Belshazzar should have known better. Yep, all he had to do was take a look at his father's life and the people before him to realize that he should have really been listening to God especially as king. For sure. I guess that's how we should be living too. What do you mean? 
Well, think about it. If we think about the people that lived before us, our friends, our family, even people in the Bible, we can look at them and how they lived, the choices they made, even the mistakes that they regret, and we can learn from them. You're absolutely right. We can also look back at what God has told us and others and learn from that as well. It's never too late to start learning from God. I agree. Don't you? <laughs> nice. Hey there, kids. Did you have a good time learning more about Daniel? Now, I'm just going to assume all of you said, yes, we loved it. <laughs> all right. Well, today's big idea is something truly special. It's I can keep learning. God is with me. Now, you know the drill. Let's roar that big idea out as loud as we can. Ready? One, two, three. I can keep learning. God is with me. Awesome job, everyone. Now, speaking of roars, I heard next week's episode has a lot of lions. I don't know. Just what I heard. Anyways, I hope I can see you then. Bye, kids. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Roar.